Good adventures, everybody. Welcome to episode eight of Books Cubed. This week, I have got John Proudstar talking with me about Tribal Force, an indigenous comic book. Before that, though, I want to quickly uh, look at comments uh, from last time. Let me get to where they are. Okay, so uh, Joe Cox um, left a nice comment on episode seven, last week's episode. Hi, Melissa Joe Cox from Tucson here. Just here to say you've got some great videos. Thank you. I still watch Crewing Up sometimes on my DVD my parents gave me for Christmas at my parents' house. I do vlogs on my channel. Keep up the great work. Um, Crewing Up was a show I did 2008, maybe, and it um, it was good. It was uh, doesn't have great sound, but the actors were great. The scripts were great, and I got work off that show. So uh, uh, there, if you look on the channel down in the videos, you will find Crewing Up. All the episodes are there. Uh, you can buy the DVD on Amazon if you'd like to. And there's some additional stuff on there that's not on here. So thank you, Joe. Thanks for watching. And uh, let's see. And then um, on episode four. Um, no, that's not it. Uh, uh, there was another one. Where was it? Maybe it was this one. Hang on. Bear with me a second here. Uh, stop. Uh, hang on here. Um, 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 okay. Um, the Beck said, the Beck 88 said, Hi, Melissa. Always enjoy your shows. Even though I'm not a writer, I Google myself periodically. This is from episode five. Uh, I seem to be the only the Beck 88 out there. So if I ever do something that calls for social presence, I guess I better stick with that. And she goes on to say that there are a million people with her name out there. So far, I haven't found any other Melissa Bond's ex, but um, we'll see. Maybe there are some more out there, and I shouldn't be moving the computer because it's bouncing around. Um, so that's comments. Um, new hair. Uh, it's a little dark. Uh, the very thin layer of that I put uh, pink. And then a little bit of yellow with a teeny bit of pink that gave it just a little bit of red. And it's a very thin layer, but it's like covering up all this great green and the other yellow. So as it fades, I'll go back and I'll, ah, it's some backwards, I'm having a hard time seeing it. So I'll go back and do some more yellow and some more of this aqua that came out pretty nicely. So uh, anyway, so uh, I think that's about it. So let's get to the interview. So today I've got John Proudstar, who I know from Tucson when I used to live there ages and ages ago. And he is an actor, very good actor, has been in tons of stuff. He's a writer, producer, haven't you produced also? Yes, I just started producing. Yeah, all kinds of stuff. Um, there's a new film coming out called Wastelander. Yeah, it's, it's out on digital download on Xfinity, Comcast, Xbox, everywhere. Oh, awesome. I'm going to have to look for it then. Does it have closed captions? Uh, I don't know. It should. Lionsgate is doing our distribution, so I'm sure they... They, they probably do then. Good. Uh, I have a cochlear implant now, so I'm not completely deaf anymore, but okay. I do like to get captions because sometimes I can't get accents, so yeah. that screws me up sometimes. So what I wanted to have John talk about today is his comic book, which is called Tribal Force. And it is out of print, but you can get a digital copy for 99 cents, which is an amazing deal. And I will have links in the show notes. So I highly, highly, highly recommend you get it. The artwork is beautiful. And the more people that download it, maybe the more uh, uh, that they'll want to do more issues of it. Yeah, we're, well, we're not out of print. Uh, I think that happened recently because we had a Comic-Con, so we had to pull all our stock, get it to the Comic-Con. So I think in the next couple of days, maybe a week, it'll be back up for sale on uh, Native Realities. So the, the tribal, it's called Tribal Force. And it, uh, just in the research that I did, it's the first Native American, all, the whole team is Native American. So it's the first comic to do that. It deals with really intense issues, child molestation. So what brought this about? 
Uh, I, I've worked with survivors of child molestation uh, for close to 30 years. And, uh, you know, being on the battlefield, you don't see a lot of progress. So when I created Tribal Force, I wanted it to, to mean something. And I met so many beautiful young people that I wanted to create characters based after them and characters that res kids could, that would resonate with res kids. Yeah, and each of the, there's what, five? There will be five characters in the full series? Uh, no, there's gonna be a lot. There's, I think there's gonna like seven or eight of them eventually. Uh, but we start out with about four or five of them uh, in, the, in the first group. And then by issue three or four, their numbers grow exponentially. Yeah, and they get their power from it's bequeathed onto them by gods and uh, it happens at different times for them. Most of them during adolescence, uh, the powers will start to manifest and uh, the thunder Eagle, this God that Nita, the little girl calls out to, she, he shows up and he basically ends up trying to help them develop their powers. Yeah, and we see him coming from a black hole. Yeah. Well, he, he's coming from a different uh, uh, time. He's a time traveler in essence, and uh, he's hanging out by black holes because he likes testing his strength like that um, to, to resist the black holes. And as he travels through time, it, it's not like a clear travel, like you show up and you remember everything. There's foggy details in his head, and uh, there's reasons he knows he's got to be in certain places at certain times. So that, that's really cool. And who, uh, you do the writing, but you have artists that do the lettering and the, the coloring and everything? Yeah, uh, Chris Williams is our artist, phenomenal artist. And Jake Eisenberg is doing our inks right now. And then we're in the midst of contracting a colorist. We're not there. We haven't finished the contract details yet, but pretty soon. But pretty soon. So you were just in the Tucson Comic Con, right? Uh, the Actually, I was in Albuquerque at the- Oh, Albuquerque. Uh, yeah, the third uh, um, annual um, Indigenous Comic Con. Hmm. So there's a lot more Native American Comic Con, Indigenous Comic Con, comics, comic books out there. Yes, and it's amazing because I get to meet these young guys uh, and gals that a lot of them were inspired by Tribal Force because their parents gave them Tribal Force when they were kids. And then they come up to me and they're like, oh my God, my parents gave me this and it inspired me. And that was another reason uh, in 96, I did the book with Ryan Huna Smith, who was the artist. And he's, he's Navajo and Chimwavy. And we were hoping that that's what Tribal Force would do, is spark that interest in other Native kids. Because there's, there's over 753 different tribes. So, you know, we can't do heroes for all of them. But, you know, if there's a comic book artist in every tribe, they can do their own heroes. Oh, yeah, most definitely. And kids need to be able to see someone who looks like them, who has, who shares their same issues and their same heritage. And so that's really important. And I, I went to the comic book store just to look and there really aren't a lot of, I mean, there's a lot of white guys. There yeah, just really isn't a lot of variety. It, it's been a predominantly white industry for the most part and you know, and it's because most of the writers and artists are white, you know, so when they think of a hero, they're going to think of a white guy. Uh, and when we think of our heroes, we think of Native guys. <laughs> and it's the yeah. same for African Americans. When they think of their heroes, it's a black guy. <laughs> yeah. Black, black girl. And, and we need our heroes. And the, the heroes I can only identify as a child with were Tonto from The Lone Ranger and then uh, Conan the Barbarian, because he had dark hair and dark skin and I was like, oh, wow, he looks kind of like we do. And then, of course, they had a couple of characters in Marvel, but they would either kill him off or they were very stereotypical. They never had follow through. Like, they'd make appearances and then vanish. Yeah, well, that's like with um, X-Men. Now, there, there are some variety of characters in X-Men, but, but even like, I remember when Boo Boo Stewart was was an X Men this last movie, and I'm I'm watching and thinking, wait a minute, I blinked. <laughs> he yeah. was you know he was barely in the movie. Yeah. I, mean, I was really disappointed in that. No, they did that to Boo Boo, and then they did that to Adam Beach in Suicide Squad. You know, he was this character, a native character, and I was like, oh cool. And then 
about three minutes into it, they killed him. And yeah. we seem to be the dispensable race for uh, comic book people. And, and a lot of it is they don't know how to handle our characters. They really don't know how to write us because of the amount of research that you have to do. And even, even me being native, I have to do tons of research because every character is from a different tribe. And like one of my characters is Hunk Papa Sue. And uh, to be honest, I know very little about the Hunk Papa, much less the modern day Hunk Papa Sue. So I've been making calls. I have a friend who's an artist, uh, Gilbert Kills Pretty Enemy. And he's been real generous with giving me information and talking to me about the modern day Hunk Papa Sue. Well, oh, that's good. And that's uh, how many tribes are, are there represented? Uh, right. I believe there's 753 recognized federal tribes. Now that number may have changed, you know, so I'm sure somebody's going to look this up and say, no, there's not, there's seven. <laughs> but, there will be somebody. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Now I saw that when, after you guys came up with the comic and, and, and it first came out that uh, uh, larger companies tried to buy the rights from you. Uh, we talked, I submitted and they were interested and, it was actually before I had published because I went to them trying to get published by them, but they all wanted too much control and they didn't want me to write about molestation or fetal alcohol syndrome in effect. And they wanted me to homogenize it, you know, like, Oh, can, can we put a white character in there? Uh, basically destroy everything that the book needed to represent. And they were just terrified because it doesn't matter what you write about in a native comic book. Eventually it all leads back to politics. It leads back to the genocide issue and all fingers point back to the government and nobody wants to, you know, not that we're writing ill about the government. We're just telling the truth and what happened during those times, it was pretty heinous. It's difficult. We like, I, I, I got one real lucrative offer from an animation studio. And and it was hard because I was broke. I was living in my parents' home. I didn't have a car. I was unemployed. And when somebody offers you a large amount of money, man, I was like, gee. <laughs> but yeah. I knew in my heart that I, I had a goal for this book. And I knew they weren't going to care as much as I care. Because, like I said, I've met the people. I've met the young people. I've been to the funerals of kids who committed suicide because of child molestation. And I know that they weren't gonna care as much as I do because those deaths left indelible impressions on me. And it's my responsibility, not theirs, to tell these stories. So are you looking then at, you said you're raising financing to get the next books? Yeah, yeah, we're, uh, we're with uh, <laughs> currently with Native Realities, uh, but it's a small press. And unfortunately, they don't have the uh, capital to, you know, finish issue two they're gonna they're definitely going to continue to help us but we still have to come up with a modicum of the money to continue publishing uh, okay are you gonna do something like a gofundme or a kickstart i i like talking to private investors mostly uh now that i started producing movies it's introduced me to you know people who like financing projects and i tend to like going for the independent because it's so much work to do those Kickstarters and things like that. And yeah. I've got a full-time job and, <laughs> and trying to do a Kickstarter and a book and have a full-time job. is just, you know, I'm 51 years old. I'm not as young as I used to be. Uh, yeah. So I tend to, I aim for people who are interested in funding my project and, you know, have a vested interest in seeing these heroes and stories, um, you know, be exposed to the public and, uh, yeah, so yeah, that's where I'm at. <laughs> well, I'm going to put the link to your production company in the show notes. So yeah, and if, maybe if someone anybody, rich is watching and wants to be involved. <laughs> that's okay. Yeah, and, and people don't realize it's about it's about $5,000 per issue. It costs per, about... Per issue. Yeah, and that's because, you know, everyone gets a page. I don't get a paycheck, but the, the colorist, the inker, the artist, the editor, the letterist, uh, the guy who puts everything together, those, those people need to be paid. And 
you know, I don't, I don't take a paycheck because this is my baby, you know, and someday when we start making movies and action figures, I'm, I might see a payday. <laughs> oh, that'd be great. That'd be great. <laughs> Have you thought about, um, yeah. about there being a, uh, animated version of Trouble Force? Oh, yes. Yeah. No, we, we do. We want animation, motion picture, action figures. We're, we're developing action figures. We just did t-shirts. We have t-shirts on amazon.com. If you go to Tribal Force t-shirts, you can buy t-shirts there. And we have stickers now, which I'm going to be putting up for sale on my page. And, you know, little things like that uh, we're starting to develop to show the marketing potential of Tribal Force. It, it has the same marketing potential as X-Men or Avengers. Anything that they've done, we can do. Uh, Tribal Force can be made into figures, backpacks, and, you know, everything that they do. But it's, it's also marketable as well as culturally relevant. Oh, yeah, definitely. And it's not, you know, they, <clears throat> for years, uh, executives kept saying that, you know, you can't have a black feature cast and you can't have a film with a woman hero because nobody will go see those. And you know, Wonder Woman was did great at the box office, and Black Panther was fantastic. It did great at the box office, and there's been several other films featuring women and people of color that have done great. So uh, there's no reason not to think that Tribal Force would wouldn't do fantastic at the theater. Yeah, and you know, and it's really funny because every time something native does come out, you know, like Dances with Wolves was one of the big films at one time, and every film that does come out, The Revenant uh thunderheart i mean it just goes on and on the films do really good i think it's just the studio's reluctance you know to handle minority stories and just like wonder woman they finally got it right because they had a female director and an awesome cast and crew and there was a native american in that <laughs> <laughs> and you know and then black panther black panther just shattered the expectations shattered it i mean and it showed how hungry people are not just natives but non-natives who want to see a, a unique and original story from the perspective of those people you know and it's just like anyone if i you know if i want to see a cool story about italy it would enthuse me if i knew oh the whole cast is italian and even the director's italian and he's from italy it would make me feel like oh wow this is going to be really good everybody please 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 Go check out Tribal Force. I will have the link in the uh, show notes at the bottom. It's it's beautiful comic. It's a important story that that needs to be told. And these are really kick ass characters too. Um, just from looking at the um, the art at the end of the stuff that you guys will be doing later issues, it's um it's like oh I can't wait I can't wait. So. Uh, Thank you so much for, for staying up. I guess it's later where I am. Thanks for hanging around and uh, chatting with oh, me no. today. And um, I'll have links and I'll have links to uh, your movie too. And I have to go check it out myself. Yeah, it's uh, the movie is Wastelander. It's a post-apocalyptic, uh, very low budget, but the, the creators did such a great job, the local director and producers they did a fantastic job with a limited amount of money and we're starting to uh basically you know invest in them locally so we're going to see some really good projects come out of them real soon and it's got really kick-ass production art the poster is gorgeous oh yeah the posters did phenomenal and you know if you, if you knew what they the resources they had and the time they had to do it in it's quite impressive and you know and there, there's always improvement that can be done and we're working on that as well. So, you know, it was a lesson for all of us and then we're gonna learn from it and get better and better. But we had such a blast making it, you know, and everybody, the, the local talent here in Tucson is amazing. So we're gonna keep supporting that. Yeah, yeah, I miss the film community, I do. Well, when you have episode two, episode, when you have issue two out, let me know and um, maybe I can get you to come back and talk about everything else that's happening with the comic book. That'll be awesome. We're perspective, we're perspectively looking at January for the release of issue two. So. Oh, that's great. Wood. That's great. You're not going to wood. Definitely, definitely. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, John. I will have show notes uh, with all the things that we talked about that you can find. Uh, Tribal Force, the comic book. 
and uh, the t-shirts that you can find on Amazon that are for Tribal Force. And I think there was some other merchandise and uh, a link to the film that you can watch, Wastelander. Have not seen it yet, but I plan on seeing it. So uh, go ahead and have a look at that. And next week I will have a reading from uh, something that I'm working on. And in the meantime, go read a good book.